In this video, we examine computations of motions of crystalline surfaces in three space by various rules depending on the shape of the surface and its position in space. Here is an example of a surface with a fixed boundary moving by its crystalline curvature. The surface is composed of plane segments of fixed normal direction, and it moves by having its planes change their position while maintaining the same adjacencies and the same fixed orientation. The normal directions of the plane segments and their rate of motion are governed by a fixed polyhedron called the Wolf shape, which specifies the surface energy function. It is the analog of a single soap bubble, because just as a sphere has the least surface area for the volume it encloses, the Wolf shape has the least surface energy for the volume it encloses. Here is the wolf shape behind the preceding computation. Each segment of that surface was parallel to some face of this wolf shape. Crystalline curvature is the negative of the rate of change of surface energy with volume swept out when the segment changes its position. This is in direct analogy to mean curvature, which is the negative of the rate of change of surface area with volume when the surface is deformed. Just as in motion by mean curvature, a dumbbell-shaped object can have its neck pinch off and each remaining piece shrink on its own. Here, the wolf shape is a hexagonal prism. In the next two examples, the wolf shape is a truncated octahedron with energy one on each of its 14 faces. Subject to having a certain square integral, motion by crystalline curvature should reduce surface energy as fast as possible in each time step. Sometimes this requires that a piece of a segment break off, and sometimes it requires that the surface become infinitesimally corrugated. In the computations, finite scale corrugations approximate such variables. Because the parameterization of the surface is a natural one using the Gauss map, and because computation of crystalline curvature does not encounter the same numerical problems as computation of mean curvature, relatively few plane segments are required and the program runs fast. All but three of the examples in this video were taped as they were computed and drawn on an Iris 4D workstation. The other three were saved first, but they ran in under three minutes each. The law for the velocity can be altered by adding a bulk driving force omega arising from something such as undercooling. We use here various functions omega which depend on position and or the local shape of the surface. We can also modify the mobility, which is the factor relating the driving force to the rate of motion. In an effort to recreate hopper crystal growth for faceted crystals, we can make omega be proportional to a hexagonally weighted distance from the central axis. We set the mobility of horizontal segments equal to zero, and we nucleate new layers at random times at convex corners which have high enough values of omega. These layers then spread by having their side facets move as before, with velocity proportional to omega plus their crystalline curvature. Growth of physically faceted crystals can also occur by motion of ledges within points that are fixed at points where crystal imperfections called screw dislocations emerge to the surface. The motion of the thin facets which bound the ledge can again be modeled as geometric growth in the above context. Since ledge height is assumed constant, the motion is effectively in 2D, and so we use a program for geometric motion of curves in the plane. Here we see various interacting ledges arising from eight screw dislocations. Finally, we show a crude attempt to simulate the effects of diffusion. We have made both the mobility and omega depend in a complicated way on the local shape of the surface. We nucleate new arms along entire vertical edges at regular time intervals. Because of these rather artificial choices of mobility, omega, and nucleation conditions, this particular computation is not to be taken seriously. It is simply an indication of how the program can respond to these factors. 
We hope to couple true diffusion into the surface motion in the near future and thereby to do true dendritic crystal growth in 3D in the crystalline context.